Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here. What back on another YouTube video. Today, I'm going to give you guys a home theater tour of my home theater. And this is pretty much my second home theater system I have. And as you guys know, I got the Clip Hopper Warfare, the nice Sharon Metallic Hopper at home. So let's go ahead and get into it. Right, so the first speaker we're going to start off is the Clip R820F floor standing speaker. Uh, the speed is 150 watt continuous to 400 watt or 600 watt peak, excuse me. 600 watt peak of full power. And the bass are insane on these guys, like you know, yeah, the woofers, the sound metallic hopper look to them. I have to say, they look really nice. Uh, I pretty much keep the reels off on these things, like all, all the time. Like, I don't ever put the reels on them, they sound great. A lot of people always say that clip speakers sound a little bit harsh. Now, these do get a little harsh, but I won't say that they weren't they're not too aggressive. I don't personally mind the harsh sound pretty much. You know, they sound, they sound pretty clean. They sound really good. You know, a lot of people always complain about that they're a little too bright. Um, personally, for me, I don't mind that at all. Uh, as long as you tune them in really good, then you can pretty much, like, keep the sound, the sound pretty nice and even. Um, and pretty much when you got some good bass, when you got some good bass in the room with good bass low frequency response from the speaker, then you got, got it going. And since we're talking about bass, let's go ahead and move on to the subwoofer, the Clip R120SW subwoofer. Yes, it's a 12 inch subwoofer, 400 watt, and it really can really hit hard. It sounds like it had more power than it, than it actually has. So it definitely, it definitely hits really hard. Now, I live in a small apartment, and we got a 12-inch subwoofer. Sometimes a 12-inch subwoofer can be a little bit overkill in a small apartment, but hey, I don't hear about it. It sounds awesome. You know, watching some Transformers, as you see, Transformers right here. <laughs> watching some Transformers, we got some explosion happening in the movie. You know, this subwoofer can really, really hit hard. I really can hit hard. So, put on subwoofer. I really love the sound of it. It does get a little bit too loud once, you know, really low bass frequency hit. It does tend to struggle a little bit when it hits like the low, low, low notes, but it still sounds good when it's, you know, pounded on it. So, like, it gets mean. It sounds really mean, and I love it. Yeah. Now, you guys may notice the speakers on top of the clip. RA20F. Now, those are the Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos modules like clips are the R41SA. These are the clip Dolby Atmos modules. Now, I would say these do a, a job with the up firing speaker position that I have them set for, but I would say I do recommend them putting them on the wall. They definitely will perform a lot better on the wall. Uh, in my experience, um, yeah, I do have a flat ceiling. I do have a nice flat ceiling. Um, but one of the things is, if you're, if you're further away, I would say probably, I would say 11 feet or so, 10 to 11 feet. Um, which pretty much to me, I'm like 11 and a half feet away from the, uh, listening, from the listening location to my TV set. And it does, uh, it does depend how far away you are. But um, pretty much, it actually sounds pretty good when you got some Adobe Atmos um, soundtrack going on in the movie. I say, um, I think that you know some movies have a really good job on it. So yeah, it actually does a really good job with uh, Adobe Atmos. Um, so yeah, but I do recommend them. They actually sound pretty good. You can use them as surround speakers as well if you want to put them as your side surround, or if you want to put them as your surround back. Uh, you can do that too. Uh, there are angles, so you're going to have to work with that. It's actually really good. And they, uh, I think the wattage is like 50 to 100 watts, so 50 watts to 100 watts peak. So they're not that powerful, uh, but they do get quite loud, especially with the uh, track switch, track switch form tweeter. It actually sounds really good. Now, since we're talking about the surround, let's go ahead and talk about them, which are the Clip R51M. Bookshelf speakers. I actually done an unboxing video of those speakers. You guys can go ahead and check those out. It's kind of an old video, 
present Johannes that video out. So these actually sound really amazing. I actually use them as my uh as my front main. Now if you're really tight on space and you really want a nice home theater system, if you're really tight on space and you just want to keep it nice and simple, small, or say like, you know, it's a significant other makes you not want doesn't want like big giant speakers in the room what you know pretty much you gotta understand that right you know big speakers they get a lot of room so yeah the r 51 m are really good uh speakers they really they pretty much break the bank for like good price speakers they really have good sound they actually sound huge than what they are they sound bigger than what they are um they do hit a lot of they do hit a decent amount of bass i would say you probably want to add a subwoofer, maybe like a tandem subwoofer with them. Uh, if you do want to play some really heavy bass soundtrack. Uh, but they do, they really do a great job with the uh, sound signature. Of them. So they actually do a job at surround, but they also do a job at front. So in your title space, I recommend the R51M uh, by Clips. They're actually really good for front speakers, good for surround speakers, and even good for surround back speakers. Next is the Eclipse R34C center channel. Now, I have to say, when I was uh, upgrading my old home theater system uh, speaker setup, I was originally just going to get the center channel, the Eclipse R34C center channel. But I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time for a full upgrade. We'll just get a whole new system. <laughs> but I have to say, this Eclipse uh, R34C center channel is really nice. It's actually small enough to like it can fit right under my TV. Now I would recommend that actually. Uh, I would recommend putting it right in front of your TV like that, especially if your <coughs> TV stand or your TV base stand sticks out quite far. So yeah, it, it's kind of a little bit off the edge, a little bit on the TV stand, you know. Um, but it's but yeah, it sounds really good. The vote will come out really clear. Okay, now you do have to tune it in uh, really well. You like you have to like even it out. And sometimes, as you noted, uh, with the trackless horn, some people say like you know the trackless horn sounds really bright. And that's uh, the exception to the center channel. The center channel does get very quite loud. The center channel is pretty much the most important speaker of a home theater system. It's pretty much to handle all the dialogue. So you really need a good center channel that has good evenness. Now, I'm not sure if this is a two-way or a three-way. I think it's mostly like a two-and-a-half-way center channel speaker. But, um, yeah, it actually has, has quad uh, hopper hole woofers on there. It has a nice quad, like three-and-a-half-inch woofers there. And like I said, it has a nice trash horn tweeter, and it even has the uh, nice trash rich port. And you let some bass frequencies out. Um, since they are small though, you probably don't want to like have bass frequency um, playing on that center channel anyway. Especially if you play something that, um, say like, you know, uh, male voices, for example. Sometimes the voice can get really, really, really deep. It can get really deep on like, you know, the center channel. And I have to say, it's actually really good. Personally, for me, when I like to tune in my center channel, I kind of like the voices to be more subtle and then have all the rest of the surround speakers like full blast sound. Now, powering all of that is the Sony SDR DN1080 AV 4K enabled receiver. Now, I know you guys are going to say I should have done with the Denon 2700 or the Denon 3700. Now, it might be a chance that I might end up going with that later and pretty soon. Now, I pretty much went with this receiver. I was, I pretty much been eyeing on it for quite a while and I wanted to try it out. Now it is a great receiver, but I wouldn't say it's the best. Um now it does do uh Dolby Atmos 5.1.2 and it does do seven channel, but once you do seven channel, you're gonna satisfy the Dolby Atmos speakers, which I have to say it's probably no O for me. I'd rather have more options. That's probably why I might end up going with the Denon 3700H uh, AVR receiver. And that one can do 5.1.4 or 7.2.2. Or if I do preamp, then that can do 7.2.4. So that's not my ideal situation. I want to do 7.2.4. Yeah. But yeah, this receiver does a really good job. And it's mostly focused on power. Like it does have a lot of power. Going through it, it does push the speaker 
a little bit too much, you know. <laughs> let's just say I didn't print it up a little bit too much. I didn't print it up a little bit too much um, with these fish. But, you know, these fish can really handle them and handle that honey of power in that receiver. But, yeah, that receiver works really good. You know, I've been a Sony fan, you know. I already had a Sony receiver. So I was like, you know what, I'll stick with Sony. I might as well get the Gen 1080. But now after having it, it's kind of like, you know what? I feel like I should have done a little bit better. I should have added the 27 or the 37 and the H. Uh, but at the time when I was actually uh, upgrading this, this was during like the whole pandemic thing. Uh, this was the time when I was upgrading it. Um, the Denon, the new Denon ABRs weren't even out yet. They weren't out, but they weren't even out yet at the time. So uh, yeah, really great receiver. Now you guys know when you have a good, powerful system. You do have to protect it with a good amount of power, and that's where my power addition comes in, the Panamax 5300 PM power addition. Now, pretty much, this is kind of improve your video and audio quality. Now, it doesn't always improve it all the time, but what it's gonna do is gonna protect your system from blowing up. And let me tell you something. My old system has blown up twice on me. Yeah, I blew up my old system twice. Um, now it was pretty much on accident, you know, mostly because uh, I triggered. Sometimes when you crank up your system too loud, uh, sometimes you trigger the uh, trigger the breaker in your apartment. Yeah, that, that happened to me. Right. So yeah, you know, I do recommend the Panamax 5300 PM. Now I pretty much will, if you're gonna go with this one for like a middle range uh, home theater system, I actually recommend this one. But I actually will recommend the 5400 or 5400 PM. Uh, most of the, that one has both the resolution uh, uh, technology into it. This one doesn't, but it actually does have uh, most of the features that you will expect from a power conditioner. Um, and pretty much, if you're, far, um, if you're living in a place that does have uh, frequent power outages, um, I recommend you know, get the power conditioner, but also get a battery backup for it. And sometimes, uh, I have seen these things burned out before. Most of the older ones are like, you know, really, really old, old systems will burn out. But, uh, so far it's been, uh, doing good. So far it's been, uh, it's been protecting the, uh, system really good. Sometimes the receiver will freak out a little bit, but it's doing a great job. Now, you guys already can tell what's on top of that guy. That's the all cheap one pack. <laughs> You know, that's what they call it, the Oxygen 1 pack. Yes, I still have Oxygen on Oxygen 1, and I'm, I apologize to people who are still waiting for, like, customer support things from me. Um, I hadn't really had as much issues. <coughs> I hadn't really had much issues, personally, with the Oxygen 1 boxes um, so far. Like, I am personally, when, when people are having issues, they tell me in the comments. And, but yeah, yeah so I'm still, I still have the Alchie One um, system. Now, the only reason why I still have it is mostly because um, it's cheaper now. And, uh, I live in an apartment complex. I get it for cheaper. And also, uh, the main box. The main box actually is kind of a good box for a home theater system. And especially because it has all the Ethernet ports. And uh, it actually uh, works very well. And surprisingly, um, let's just say I had problems here and there. It's mostly because of the, mostly my like playback issues with on demand and GBR. That's kind of the only issue I'm having with it right now. Um, but otherwise, I haven't really had much issues with it. So far, what it is. And that is the full on um, beautiful PlayStation 5. Now, you guys can see it right over here. But here's the next close up shot of it. And the beautiful PlayStation 5. Let me tell you guys something. It's been two months to get this thing. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful PS5. Now, I actually been using it as my 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player for a little while. And it can do Adobe Atmos. You just have to do some setting configuration, uh, to get it to work. Um, but it actually plays 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray really well. Um, now, I personally don't really play much video games nowadays. You know, back in the PS3 days. Yeah, I was a true gamer back then. But now, like, you know, pretty much gaming nowadays I pretty much kind of got bored of it now I'm trying to get back into it and that's pretty much why I went ahead and got a PS5 the only reason why I got a PS5 is just to have it <laughs> so just to have it and you know, I mean come on come on it, it, it looks good but as you guys can tell next to it I do have my Ultra HD Blu-ray player which is the Sony X700 Ultra HD Blu-ray player now 
this Blu-ray player is good enough. I would say it's good enough for most people, but for me personally, I have bad luck with it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to say it right now. I have bad luck with it. I've been using the Sony, uh, the PlayStation Five more than the Ultra HD Blu-ray player. Now, the only reason why I'm still using the Ultra HD Blu-ray player. Uh, is that it allows me to adjust the audio settings and also adjust some of the picture settings. Uh, pretty much to put, like, you know, the, uh, picture quality modes into wet mode rather than put, like, you know, the Blu-ray modes into theater modes. And sometimes, uh, Blu-rays, they look too bright, they look too dark, you know, you guys, you guys get the idea. And I feel like the only reason why I still use it. Um, but I would have to say, um, if you're on tight on budget or you just want to OCH Blu ray player, oh, with this one, but let me just say, the other run into some hiccup with this guy. Uh, first of all, it, it'll be the freezing. I have been experiencing a lot more freezing lately with the Sony X700 uh, Blu ray player. I almost said Mark II Blu ray player. Um, yeah, I've been experiencing a lot of freezing, and it seems to happen on like towards the end of the movie. Actually, it happens so many times with Transformers. Uh, it's been happening so many times with Transformers and uh, Terminator. You know, Terminator, the best movie of all, you guys already know. And it's been happening a lot with me. So I kind of stopped using it. Um, so yeah, I pretty much just use it. Just, uh, if I just want to, like, you know, enjoy the movie and I just want to hear the quality, hear the quality audio, I'll go ahead and pop it in there. But just to know, I do expect it to shut off. It actually shut off for me a couple of times. And even when as far as rejecting the disc itself, yes, it rejects the disc by itself. So I am kind of fed up with it. Um, and, you know, and pretty much the Dolby Vision uh, situation that people are having with it. Now, my TV doesn't support Dolby Vision, but I do want to get a Dolby Vision and able to TV soon. So pretty much if I want to do OTA HD Blu-ray for it, I definitely want to get the Panasonic UV820. Or if I would have had a little bit more money to spend, or if I would have had extra money to spend, I would have gotten the UV9000. Uh, and I personally prefer higher end equipment and I have bad luck with cheap products. Bad luck. I mean, like, so much bad luck to the point that I can't even buy a cheap TV. Now, this TV over here is a Heisen cheap TV. Oh, and this TV over here is a cheap Heisen TV, which it's okay, but I can already tell that, oh, I'm not going to like it. Like, you know, I prefer something like in between like the Samsung to the Sony route. So, um, pretty much, hopefully pretty soon, I hope to get my hands on a new Sony TV with Dolby Vision. I want to get my hands on the 950H Sony HDR4 TV. Is that has Dolby Vision? Now, I know you guys can say, you should go with the 900H because you got the beautiful PS5. Now, since I don't really game that much, I feel like I don't really care about the, uh, thing. Now, before you, uh, before the TV, yeah, there is my Nintendo Switch stock. I don't really play my Nintendo Switch as much, but I have been playing it. I have been playing Pokemon a little bit more. So, yep, there's my Nintendo Switch. Now, let's get to the TV. Alright, so here is my 4K OHD TV. It's a 6290 model Samsung TV. One of their, you know, cheaper budget end TVs. Now, I know I was just ranting about budget TV, but at least this is from a regular brand, a familiar manufacturer, you know, well-known manufacturer, so that's very much understandable. So, <clears throat> now this is an older TV. It doesn't support HDR10+, uh, neither does the Ultra HD Blu-ray player, so I don't expect Ultra HD or HDR10+, to even work on it. Um, but this is the reason why I want to get a Sony TV, because the Sony... Um, the Sony, I asked when you had messed around with actually my brother-in-law, he had the 900F, uh, 4K HDR Sony TV. And I have to say, I kind of like that TV a lot more than the Samsung. Uh, mostly because of Android TV, I kind of like having more features with the app and stuff. Uh, the Samsung is pretty good. It has really good, uh, the HDR is okay. It does get, uh, Somewhat bright, but not as bright as you think that there's going to be some extra detail. And you definitely do need to tune it in a little bit to get some more detail. Specifically more for video than gaming. It actually looks good for gaming, but it's not really that good for uh, watching TV or anything. Now, I actually do have some good HDMI cable. I have the 
really nice high-end at TV HDMI cable from Amazon. You got fifty dollars. Yes, really expensive. And uh, I do recommend these if you really want to cut um, a lot of like interference and a lot of stuff. Uh, let me tell you something. When you live in an apartment, when you have a lot of electronics in one spot, you you know, add up a lot of interference. So I definitely recommend you get some fiber optic HDMI. You know, it'll, uh, it'll help you one. I did have one fail on me, but uh, it was just one. But uh, anyway, guys, that is the home theater tour of my living room home theater. You know, the clips, you know, the nice clip speaker in there. I think I probably missed a couple of things, but if I did, you know, it's okay, you guys will always see it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video to your friends if they want to know more about home theater. Now, pretty much, I want to do more home theater videos. It's just going to take me some time. You know, I've been messing around with this thing for a while. And, uh, guys, I want you to please, please subscribe. Like, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Hit a video to your friends. Ring that bell on You don't have to. You know, you don't have to. But it'll help, though. It'll, it'll help. You know, you bring the bell notification. And, uh, let me know what you guys want to see. But, uh, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Peace.